my gosh, it has been quite literally 300 years since I've seen you, unless you went to one night, which was like just a couple days ago. Uh, but man, it has been a minute since I was here at your campus, right in front of you, on your screen. Hello, welcome back. I am pumped to be with you again, and I'm excited to start off this series. We're gonna be in this for a while, and it's called Follow the leader. And we have been learning about who Jesus is the last several months. We've been learning about his birth, how he was divine, how he got rejected, um, how he overcame sin and nature and needs. And here's the deal. We're going to jump in to how he lived his life, okay? Um, and this series, we're going to be in it. Like I said, we're going to be in it for a minute. That, that rhymed. That was good. I didn't plan that. We're going to be in it for a minute, and we are taking a deeper dive, a deeper look into how Jesus actually lived his life. So we know all about him. We know these things about him, but now we're going to see, like, how did he handle these things? So I'm going I'm to give you a little sneak peek about this series. Um, we're going to talk about how, how the Lord prunes us like you would a plant taking care of it. We're going to talk about how he balances grace and truth, how Jesus taught us to love our enemies and how he loved his, and how he calls those who some of us would consider outcasts. And so this whole series is going to be about how we can be a reflection of him, how we can how we can follow his example, how we can be what Christian means, which means little Christ, uh, an example of Christ. So, you ready? You ready to strap into this thing? Because right now, today, we are talking about rest. Oh, rest and dependence, right? Rest and dependence, that is uh, kind of the title of today. And I have the privilege on teaching about that, on how Jesus was dependent on the Father, which is it's, it's a funny topic for Hannah Fair because I think it's an area I'm simultaneously strong in in moments, but really, really weak in in others. And I'm sure my Freeport people could attest to that and some of the champions. Ooh, Hannah needs to chill out sometimes. Um, but I want to start off as we talk about this with a foundational truth. This is going to set you up not only just for for this message, but for the series, and really something that if you don't already kind of have in your brain, that will set up how you view God, okay? So Jesus and God are one, okay? I know you're like mind blown, right? I know some of you are like, duh, Hannah, we get that, we've been taught that, we understand that, but the reality is, it like that's that's pretty, it's foundational, okay? It's, it's important that we understand because I think sometimes we like have that thought in our head, but we actually separate them more than they're supposed to be separated. And obviously we have, we have God the Father, we have God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. They're the Trinity, three in one, um, but at the same time, uh, they have the same heart, okay? And so uh, Jesus, it, it even says throughout scripture um, that I and the Father are one. Jesus says that. He says that in John 10, 30. But I want to I wanna emphasize this, that sometimes we think that God, God the Father, is this harsh God in the Old Testament, you know, first part of the Bible, whatever. And then Jesus is this nice, loving, kind in the, in the New Testament. But you have to understand that they are one. They have the same heart. Um, it's, they're an extension of each other. And so uh, that has to be a foundational. And certainly you can ask more questions about that. And tribes, your leaders will be, be good to answer some of those, those questions. But it's important that you know that as we go into this, because we want you to know that um, the, the Trinity is something that comes alongside of us and helps us and it's God in different ways. And so... Jesus and God are one. They were together before the foundations of the world. Um, if you read in John chapter one, it talks about being the word. So we, he is an extension of the father um, and he came down to save us. And so they have the same desires for us. Okay. So we're going to take a look at the scriptures because the cool part about this is, is though they're extension of one another, Jesus, when he was here on earth was dependent. Everybody say dependent. Now that was weak. Say it again. Dependent. He was dependent on the Father, 
okay? He would take time. So we're going to dive in. Let's look at some scriptures. Um, and this, we're going to start off with a particular scripture, Mark 135. It's short, but I'm going to set it up for you. So this is during the time um, that Jesus was going around. He was traveling. He was teaching. He was healing. He was doing ministry. And this is before he preached in Galilee. And this is what the scripture says. It's Mark 135. I'm reading out of ESV. Um, it says, and rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. So that tells you that Jesus, this is Jesus, he, he got up. Now, hold on. I do not like getting up early. Who am I? Okay, raise your hand. Are you an early bird? Raise your hand if you're an early bird. If you're like, ah, oh, I love to get up before the butt crack of dawn and start my day and love life. Okay, good for you. Now, my people who are like, I stay up till midnight, 3 a.m., just crawl out of bed, whip together, hair's a mess, outfit unmatched. Anybody? Hello, my people. You and I, we can get through this. Anyway, but Jesus prioritizes, right, this time away. It says, rising very in the early... Early in the morning, while it was still dark, he, he departed, went to a desolate place, and there he prayed. He prayed to the Father. He, what we call, communed with God, took time with the Lord, his Father. And so later in Mark, Jesus even takes his disciples, and he, he sees what they've been doing. Uh, it talks about how that they had been around crowds and a bunch of people, and he takes them away and from others, and he has them rest. This is Mark 6. 30 through 32. This is around the time Jesus feeds the 5,000. And verse 30 says, the apostles returned to Jesus and told him all uh, that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. You know, it's so cool because like Jesus in Mark, in Mark 1, he's doing that. Then he has his disciples do that. And now we are to do that as well. We're to, we're to go away. We're to, uh, to take some time in a, in a quiet place with God. And I'll get to, get to that in a minute. But it reminds me, you know, we're talking about how Jesus and God the Father are one. Um, it reminds me of how uh, God's described in Psalm 23, verses 1 and 2. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters, and he restores my soul. Crave, he, he quiets us. He, he takes us away from the busy, and physically, he even... He, he returned his disciples to a place of rest, okay? So these are all the ways in which, again, we're following Jesus' example. We're following the leader and what he did. And I want to share, we're going to go deeper into, this is kind of where we're landing in our teaching today. It's Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Now, some of you, um, some of you, first of all, you might have heard this topic before. You might have parents. I remember when I was in high school, your girl was involved in way too much. I did the plays. I did volleyball. I did clubs. Blah, blah, blah. Bruh. And my parents would constantly tell me, margin, Hannah. You have to have margin in your life, Hannah. Hannah, you should probably have some margin in your life. Guess what they're still telling me? margin. Um, and so uh, it's, it's a difficult concept sometimes to get in our brains of rest, right? Because we live in this culture that's like, do this, do that, be involved in everything. Here are your millions of opportunities. You should be ever at every sports practice. You should do this. Uh, you have to be at every game. Uh, and if you're not in traveling ball, you're not going to get played. If you're not practicing your singing before the play practice, you're not going to land the part. All these things, and then on top of that, homework, and families, and, and friendships. If, if we can even fit that in, and heaven forbid you have a dog that you want to pet every once in a while, right? So all these things are tugging at us, and it's like all this stuff all around, and Jesus still tells us to rest. So we're going to take a look at, at Luke 10, 38 through 42. This is the story of Martha and Mary. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. 
But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Okay, so here we have two sisters. Martha's making sure everything's good to go. She has, uh, she has the Messiah in her house. She has um, someone who is very well-known and well-respected and regarded, and she's taking care of things, um, which is noble, which is honorable. But what Mary's doing is she's sitting at the feet of Jesus. She's just receiving all that he has. And I want to tell you that sometimes we can, we can be one of these people. We can also be somebody who, who isn't even in the house, but but we can, we can find ourselves in both places sometimes, right? Places where we are, resting and receiving and all of that. But sometimes, and I would venture to guess for most of us, it's majority of the time, we are that, Martha, where we are going around and doing things and again crave. It's not bad that you're involved in things. And honestly, it's great that you are. I'm, I'm so glad. And some of those things are super life-giving. But do you hear what the difference is? Jesus didn't say, Martha, Martha, you're doing bad things. You're making wrong choices. He's saying that Mary has chosen the good portion. Okay, so the things, he, he, she's not prioritizing the things of, that Jesus had. Martha is getting other things done while Mary is choosing to receive. And so we have to determine which season of life that we need to be in or we need to go more toward. Maybe you you are a person who, maybe you're just like, just you don't do anything and you need to um, be someone who is more active in participating and receiving of God. Because though, though Mary wasn't up and active and going around, she was still attentive. She was still involved. She was still present in what was going on. But Martha had removed herself with all the duties and different things and stuff had piled up. Now listen, I will be the first to say, seriously, this message is for sure for me too. I know what this is like, Crave, when we, when we do some of this, when we are not prioritizing his presence. And so I want you to remember to start pushing now, pressing into that presence of God. I want you to start making sure that you are a person who isn't convoluted with all those busy things, but you are a person who is intentional about sitting at the feet of Jesus. Your safest and your best place is always as a son and as a daughter first. And in order to truly know who Jesus is, Crave, we have to follow his example. We have to know who he is. And we have to be willing to spend time with just us in the Lord. We have to be willing to be tucked away and, and, and get to know him personally. Um, he's safe, okay? And we can spend that time with just him but we have to prioritize him. And the reality is, Crave, we want our time with Jesus to not just be a spectacle on a Wednesday, but something sacred every day. And when we can lean into him, when he takes us away from the busyness, when he takes us away, when he pulls us from our to-do list, the reality is, is we're much better off. We're more in his will. We, we, we have the heart of Jesus, and we're in the presence of God. That's your most important place, Crave. That is, that is quite literally the only place that you will be able to reside and stay in that will keep you um, well, that will keep you in perfect peace. But if we don't take that time, if we let everything else come before that, then we will never be people who truly rest in who Jesus is. And we'll never be able to hear what he wants from us. We'll never be able to hear his, his footsteps. There was a story. I remember being in Crave when I was a student and we once watched a video on a missionary. And this has stuck with me all these years. I don't remember his name. I don't remember anything like that. But he was a man who was following Jesus and he would literally wake up every morning and not, he didn't have anything on his schedule. He would wake up every morning at like 4.30 or 5 o'clock and he would wake up and he'd say, God, Tell me what you want me to do today. Tell me what you want me to do today. That's how he lived his life. That's how. It, it was complete dependence on whatever God had for him. And so I want to encourage you that that is the place where we want to stay. That is the place that we want to reside is 
in that secret place with God is we want to hear, what do you have for me today? Because again, it might be a million good things on your plate, Crave, but are they God's best? Are they God's things? Are we really sitting in a place with God where we know, I can lay back and breathe? You're going to tell me. You're going to keep me. It's It's a place of so much more peace and so much more comfort with him. So that's God's heart. That's Jesus' heart. That's, a, that's the example that he shows us. If he tucked away in rest, he tucked his disciples away, he told others to not be in a place of anxiousness, but to rest. And so I'm going to give you this challenge, Crave. I'm going to give you the challenge to be in your Bible, to get in the Word of God every day. If, it, if it's five minutes, if you start small, whatever, build it. If you miss one day, don't miss the next one. If you miss the second one, don't miss the third one. But this has to be something that you're, you're going and you're drawing away. Bring your Bible to crave. Start. Just start. Do something that is tangibly taking you into time with Jesus. Because your best is living in his rest. So I'm going to pray for you guys, and I want to extend an opportunity for those of you who have never said yes to Jesus before. If you haven't said yes, God, I want to live in your rest. I want to I want to be dependent on you. All you have to do is say yes to Jesus and and then start following him. And there's people at at your Crave campus and your tribe, your friends that will help you get through that. But the first step is just saying, yes, Lord, I need you in my life. So I'm going to pray. And if if you are somebody who hasn't yet accepted Jesus as your savior, um, I'm going to give you an opportunity to just repeat after me, whether it's out loud or or under your breath. Um, But it is the best decision ever to be able to rest and stay dependent on Jesus. So let's pray, Crave. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us the opportunity to stay dependent on you, to be able to rest in who you are. Lord, I just pray for anyone here that has yet to say yes to you, Jesus. Lord, right now, that they would just, with everyone's eyes closed and your heads bowed, if there's uh, somebody that hasn't said yes to Jesus, if you just want to slip up your hand and you just want to say yes, it's not about, it's not about, the hand raised, that's not your ticket, but that's a a physical sign of showing that, yes, I'm in. But if you want to say yes to Jesus today, I want you to repeat this after me. Um, You can say it out loud or under your breath, but anyone who's accepted Jesus before, let's all say this out loud together. Just say, Jesus, I know I need you. I see that I'm a sinner and I need to repent for my sins. I know that you're the Savior, and I know that you love me. So today, I accept you as Lord of my life. Help me live this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. Crave, if you made that decision today, talk to a leader, talk to a friend, tell somebody about this and have them come alongside of you. But I love you. Have a great time talking in tribes about how we can be living our best when we're in God's rest.